Maybe someday you'll go back again to Ireland.
This story, ladies and gentlemen, goes way back in the annals of history. And it was one of the first set of stories ever to be written down in pen, Oscoelen. It's a story written by a monk who got a vision one night, probably after a long, long weekend like, from St. Patrick himself that said you must write down the stories of the Ulster Cycle. It's not a bike like, it's about Cúcullin. And this Ulster Cycle happened around the time of our Lord's coming. And it was seen to be the Old Testament of Ireland and that the Bible be the New Testament. And this, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is how Cúcullin got his name. In Leinster, there was a woman who gave birth not by man and woman, but by a god coming down as a serpent into her bed and laying the egg of a small big man <laughs> that they named Satanta. He came out after about two weeks and he was about two foot seven. He grew up to be a very big small man and at the age of seven, he said to his mother, good luck. And as not many small big men at the age of seven would say that nowadays. <laughs> I mean, who'd make their lunch for school and who'd buy them Nintendo games? So this man said he'd go off and he'd go way up to the men of Ulster for he heard that the Ulster men were the wisest and the most glorified men of all Ireland. And the leader of those men was King Conquerbor, the red-bearded man who was approximately eight foot tall with two inches to spare. So he walked the whole way up from Leinster to Ulster which in any man's terms could be across uh, the borderline, but we'll say it's 200 miles from one end to the other. And he came across the doors of the men, the Lechra of Ulla, and he banged on the doors. And in those times, you had to get an invite. So when they opened the doors and found the stranger, everyone had the chance to pick at him, bully him, and beat him up. At the time, there was 50 small, small boys playing hurling, javelin throwing, learning how to play with the sword, they were all wooden, like they were very small. And they started beating up this poor small boy who was only seven years old just after leaving his mammy two days. And then this small big man started beating them up. He took 50 of them on with his two bare hands and he grabbed a hurley halfway through the fight and he was getting the upper hand when a big red bearded man came out from a big door and cried, who's making all this noise? <laughs> well, he saw in the bottom corner three young fellas being beaten to a pulp by a big small man named Satanta. Well, he picked Satanta up by the scruff of his neck and brought him into his court. He sat him down in a small chair and he looked fierce big and he asked him a load of questions. <laughs> so he answered them honestly. And Conquerbor kind of liked the idea of a small big man being very honest on his first day and no fear of the red beard. So he took him on under his wing and he gave him the art of hurling, the real slitter and come on, the only sport in the world at the time. And he gave him the art of sword swashing, sword swabbling, and sword swallowing, as well as javelin throwing and shield wielding. <laughs> Later years, someone else showed him how to drive a chariot, and he was a great charioteer. <laughs> but time moved on, and he was a great lechra at the age of 14. And he was invited to all the parties. Nowadays, you have to be about 21 to be invited to most parties, <laughs> and 18 to be brought to the pub legally. But at 14, they brought him to all the parties, and the big party of the year was on May Day. Uh, nothing was going down at the time, only that party. And on May Day, it was the party of the blacksmith, the party of Cullen, who had a big, huge house at the opposite end of Ulster, and he had a huge gate and a big dog guarding the gate. It was a huge Irish wolfhound who stood seven foot tall in his front legs and 14 foot tall in its hind legs. <laughs> It had big teeth that spit constantly flowed from whether his mouth was open or closed. <laughs> so the party was being getting ready. They sanded down the food from last year, put up the balloons, <laughs> got the decorations ready. There was monkeys playing in the corner, harps, flutes, banjos, whatever you're having yourself, uh, custard cre creams flying in every place, whatever paid for, I don't know. So the time came when the Laker were leaving the big table of Ulla and going down to Colin's house. But outside, it was a fine summer's day, for the summers were always hot back then. <laughs> and they were happy. So they were leaving the courtyard, and they said, to, they said to Satanta, come on, boy, we're going to the big feast. And he said, sorry now, Conquerbor, I hate to 
be a bit of annoyance, but can I follow on because I'm playing these lads. It was Satanta versus 15 other small boys, and he was up by 14 points, and there was only about 10 minutes left in the half. He said, all right, but you better be quick. So they went on in their chariots and they reached the house of Cullen and Cullen put on a huge feast. The fires were slackened. There was huge roaring and dancing with the dinted drink. I'm sure it was uh, Fanta they had at the time. <laughs> Tenora wasn't invented yet. <laughs> and they were all celebrating inside and no one thought to think of Satanta. The gates were closed and the dog was let out. Well, Satanta came along and he was getting bored as he was running at 50 miles an hour. So he decided to throw up his slitter on top of his come on. He popped the slitter, threw the come on like a javelin after it, and he ran, cut the come on, and on top of it, without touching the ball, just like Jimmy Barry Murphy and John Fenton, he catched the ball on the top of his hurley, and then he was able to puck it in any way, nearly better than Christy Ring. <laughs> So he came to the door, and outside the door he could hear the great revelry. The great noise, the singing and dancing, and the swashing of food and drink down into fellas' bellies. And I'm sure there was great crack going on inside. But outside, just in front of the gate, as the twilight was hitting the land, was a huge Irish wolfhound. There was spit flowing from its two fangs as it smiled at this small big man coming towards him and the spit was falling down from the top of his teeth and splashing in big buckets on the ground and there was a small big man and all he had to defend himself was a hurley in a schlitter well the dog smiled at him and it was the first time ever in his life that Satanta felt the tiniest grain of fear and he looked back at the dog and he didn't know what he was going to do well, the dog showed his 48 teeth and showed the extra four that were down his belly, waiting for the head of this poor small boy. And he opened, and the big tongue came out and licked a butterfly off a little flower and gobbled it, just like one of those lizardy things in the desert. Well, Satanta didn't know what to do as the dog went down on its four legs and started going like a bull and it started running towards poor Satanta. Well, Satanta had a quick thought, threw up the slitter, and just like Christy Ring looking at the back of the limerick net, swung at the ball. The ball went flying through the air. You could hear it whistling over the moor to Maggie as it was going towards the dog. <laughs> Well, it hit the dog's front teeth, breaking them, squashing blood all out the front and spit and blood falling down onto the ground like it was the cork flag and then down the galley of the dog and through the trot and pushing everything as it went by, splitting the four limbs, the four legs went into four trees and I'm sure they used them as flagpoles afterwards. It pushed the rest of the dog and sprung it back in. There was a cry from the dog as it hit the back of a tree, no pun intended. While well, the blood was spilling from the fangs of the dog and the eyes were gone at this stage as blood and spit and gruel and puke and all the intestines were falling down the back of the tree. While well, the dog was there and no life left in it but the howl was heard inside. They all stopped. The fires nearly went out with the sound they thought was the banshee outside. When well, they rushed out, first through the gates was Cullen, looking to see what was going on. Second through the gates was Fergus, the head lechra of Ulla. And third through the gates was the king himself with the big beard, and he nearly hitting his big head off the top of the roundy gates. And there they were, and they saw this poor small boy who they only just remembered. And holy God, they were delighted that he was all right, looking around at nothing else but picking him up and putting him onto his shoulders and cheering all the way in. Well, on their way back, didn't they see near the bark of the tree no bark coming from the dog but the wailing from Colin? And he crying, Who's going to look after my house now? For he thought the dog was only 12 years old and there was going to be another 12 years before he was going to fall into retirement and he hadn't any trained up or nothing to be ready to be guarding his door. Well, quick as a flash, Satanta jumped off the shoulders of the two men and said, I'll be your dog. <laughs> just like the Kiora had, and he went, woof, 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 woof. <laughs> well, it was from that day forward, ladies and gentlemen, that he became known as the Dog of Cullen, or in the native Irish, Coo Cullen. And he never went off to Australia to make a crust. Thank you very much. And watch the sun go down on Galway Bay To see again the ripple of the trout stream The women Yeah.
safely landed Called myself a fool, I could no longer stand it Blood began to boil, temper I was losing Poor old Aaron's Isle, they began abusing Hurrah, me so says I'm a shillelagh I look like Galway boys were nigh And so I was a hobbling with the loud array Joined in the affray, we quickly cleared the way For the rocky road to double and one, two, three, four, five Had the hair and turn her down the rocky road All the way to double and whack for lolly Turn her down the rocky road All the way to Dublin Whack for lolly ra Whack for lolly ra Whack for lolly ra In Dublin's first city Where the girls are so pretty I first set my eyes on sweet Molly Malone she wheeled her wheelbarrow through streets Broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels Alive, alive, oh Alive, alive, oh Alive, alive, oh Crying cockles and mussels Alive, alive, oh She was a fishmonger and sure it was no wonder For so were her father and mother before They both wheeled their barrow through streets Broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels Alive, alive, oh Alive, alive, oh Alive, alive, oh Crying cockles and mussels alive, alive, oh She died of a fever and no one could save her And that was the end of sweet Molly Malone But her ghost wheels her barrow through streets Broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels Alive, alive, oh Alive, alive, oh Alive, alive, oh Crying cockles Here I am from Putty's land, a land of high renown I broke the hearts of all the girls for miles from Katie Town And when they hear that I'm a wad, they raise a hullabaloo When they hear about the handsome lad, they call a Donahue For I'm the boy to squeeze her, and I'm the boy to tease her I'm the boy to tease her up, and I tell you what I'll do I court her like an Irish man with the broken blarney tools Me plum with me rolling and swalling and hollying and bolling and bowl a Donahue well, I wish me love was a red, red rose a grow an onion garden wall And me to be a dewdrop upon her brow I'd fall Perhaps she might think of me as a rather heavy too And the more she loved that handsome lad they call O'Donoghue For I'm the boy to squeeze her and I'm the boy to please her I'm the boy can tease her up when I tell you what I'll do I court her like an Irish man with a broken blarney too Me blum with me rolling and swalling and hollying and bolling and bowl a Donahue Well I hear that Queen Victoria has a daughter fine and grand Perhaps she'd take it into her head to marry an Irish man And if I could only get a chance to have a word or two I'm sure she'd take a notion in the bowl of Donahue For I'm the boy to squeeze her, I'm the boy to please her I'm the boy to tease her up and I tell you what I'll do I court her like an Irish mom with a broken blarney too Me blum with me rolling and swalling and hollying and bolling and bowl of Donahue
video camera.
Is that terrible? <laughs> I had to come inside to get away from the smoke.